I just want to want to do a quick video um, to give people an idea of what to expect from properties, you know, renting an apartment or something. Because some people have got standards way up here, but want to pay way down here. Um, while other people will say, "Well, I want to pay this," but they really don't know what to expect. So this video will actually help a little bit with that. So you got bamboo furniture, local made, cheap, solid. Electric ceiling fan, not aircon, because most people can't afford aircon in the first place. Uh, basic kitchen, the reason the, they have that is they don't actually have a physical oven in the hob, they just have a small oven that sits on the top with a grill on it, very small, you know, this size. Basic toilet, um, the reason a lot of the cisterns and stuff don't work either, um, and a single tap, that is your shower. Um, I'll come back to this in a minute once the video is finished. Basic bamboo bed, rock solid, just need a mattress. You get your own mattress as well because the mattresses they throw away, you can get one for like 600 pesos, very cheap things, uh, last a couple of years and then you bin it and buy another one. The reason being nobody wants somebody's soggy, wet, sweaty um, mattress after they've left. Plywood, wardrobes, basic, made, easy to repair. You can see there's a pattern here, a system, is to keep everything cheap. Um, and it's not because they're tight on the money or something, it's because the rent values um, don't put enough money back into the building to make it worth investing a lot of money in it. Also, if you get a bad tenant, they'll steal your TV, they'll steal everything that isn't nailed down. But also, they will leave it in a way that is unacceptable in the West. Um, well, I say that, I've dealt with social housing, so I've, I've dealt with real scumbags. Um, but the point is, I've seen it where new tenants going in, have had to repaint it and clean the place. Uh, not their, not ours, but I'm talking about, um, they've said, Matt, have a look at this, where they've rented somewhere and the owners haven't cleaned it up. but. They're not small owners like this one because that one's in a block of three apartments. They're, they're, I'm talking about in a block of about 40 uh, where it's got a caretaker sort of set up and they'll just basically uh, not do any of the work. They'll just get you to clean it out because the last person left at two in the morning disappeared without paying the rent for months. But that is at a basic apartment in the Philippines. Now, some people go, well, I'm not living in some like, something like that. Nobody's telling you to. I'm telling you that for that sort of rent market, which is probably the 6,000 pesos mark, um, that's what to expect. My friend Eric lived in a place that cost 1,500, um, which was probably about half the size and a lot more basic, but he was only back for a while while he's processing his wife's visa, etc. So he wasn't too concerned about um, planning long term because his place before that was actually quite a nice um, row house which was a nice size uh, I think it was three bedroom had his own space on the front uh, you could run a shop even if you wanted I couldn't knock that at all um, but even the place he was stopping in at 1.5 it's fine but a lot of people can't live basic and w which is why they get hung up on all this but like I'm saying this is the a level that's about six thousand. Um, if you were living in my personal apartment, um, which I don't rent out, the fact is I've got a plasma TV. Uh, sorry, a thirty-two inch LCD TV, smart TV, where it's got internet and everything wired up into the TV, etc. It's got CCTV system. It's got a large sofa set, etc. I wouldn't rent that out for anything less than twenty-five thousand pesos a month. Um, because the amount of stuff in that place is a lot more expensive and this is what people look at now if you want to get to a hotel standard go to a hotel but I'll tell you now renting one of these places and go and buy yourself a little TV and stuff etc it works out cheaper over over a, a period of time if you're stopping 12 months buy the stuff buy it yourself because you can all sell it at the end of it um, you may not get what you want for it, but for the amount you pay for getting somebody with more expensive equipment in it, you could probably buy it yourself. 
Um, and that's the best advice on there because you can also get what you want. Um, so you get your apartment you like the way you like. That's why I keep mine basic. The idea being is you can move in there, decide, okay, I don't like the bed, Mac, can you take the bed out, I'll buy my own bed, etc. I have no problem with that. The rent won't go up, it's your bed. But the advantage you got is you can get a nice expensive bed um, that you're happy with. You can get yourself a 32 inch TV instead of the the um, 21 inch LCDs that we have. It's all about, you know, making the best of what you've got but being realistic um, if you wanted a house in the subdivision you can hunt around you'll get you'll get some from about well if you go to a decker homes for example which aren't a great subdivision um, they're packed in like sardines in row houses etc those are gonna be from about probably about five and a half to six thousand upwards um, if you're looking at something like a four bedroom subdivision house with a guard on the gate and restricted access, you're probably looking at 15, 20,000 a month upwards. Um, that's the rea reality of places. Personally, I find subdivisions are a bit like locking yourself in with criminals because people that have a lot of money in the Philippines um, have a potential to be a risk to you <laughs> that's the diplomatically way of saying you don't know who you're locked in with um, which is why the subdivisions to me have got no appeal um, but also I don't go halfway around the world to experience nothing um, I like being amongst the community I like being part of the community. Subdivisions sort of isolate people. But also a lot of subdivisions are fairly empty um, because they've been bought with overseas money and the people that own them are overseas. So it all depends what you want to do. My personal preference, keep it simple. You can always upgrade. Take a six month lease on or three months or just turn around and say, well, I'll, I'll do a three month deal um, but I, I may want to move on after three months and then all you got to do is like in month month two just say well I want to extend or okay I'm gonna be gone so that you've given your you know give them a bit of notice so that they can be aware that you're gonna be gone um, because what the, the, the way it normally works in the Philippines is you don't get a deposit back you run your months out so if you pay like one month deposit, uh, sorry, two months deposit plus one month up front, which is normal. So you pay three months up front. Um, they won't give you the two months back. They'll just turn around and say, okay, don't pay the rent for the next couple of months. That's that's how it is, because most of the time the money's already spent. You, you probably heard me talking about the road before. This was a prime example because a German guy had decided to take on a row house in our neighborhood. He, he'd already paid a deposit down and somebody had promised they would fix the road. Um, I'm being diplomatic here. Uh, it wasn't me, but he paid the deposit, etc., come back and the road hadn't been fixed, so he didn't move in. Um, they lost a good tenant over there, um, but the, the fact is where I put all that stone down is exactly the bit he was looking for it to be repaired because his house is a bit further down, but instead he just said, I ain't living here. and went somewhere else where myself I don't mind investing in the community because it's where I live well anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it